Welcome back to the range. If you have spent any amount of time warming your hands around a wood stove at a deer camp, or engaging in the age-old debate at the local gun counter, you have inevitably heard the sermon of the 243 Winchester. I get the romance. Truly, I do. This cartridge is an absolute sweetheart to run. The recoil impulse is so mild you could shoot it all afternoon in a t-shirt and never develop a flinch. It shoots flat. It is mechanically precise, and it has cemented a reputation as the ultimate Swiss Army knife of the American woodlands. Folks swear by its ability to vaporize a groundhog at 400 yards, and then turn right around and drop a whitetail buck in his tracks. But here is the rub. That reputation? It is a trap. The 243 is almost too polite for its own good. It is so easy to drive that it lulls shooters into a false sense of security. People start believing this little 6mm pill is some kind of magic death ray that can ignore the laws of ballistics. And eventually, usually, when a trophy rack is staring you down, reality comes knocking. You see you never find the failure point of a cartridge when you are punching paper at 100 yards on a bluebird day. You find that limit when the buck of a lifetime steps out at 300, you break a clean shot, and the round just fails to deliver the kinetic energy needed to shut the lights out. That is why we need to strip away the nostalgia and look at the cold, hard data. The 243 Winchester is a phenomenal tool, but it has hard ceilings that the old-timers forget to mention, and the rookies haven't learned yet. This is the 243 paradox, the issue nobody wants to discuss until the freezer stays empty. So let's break this down. Number 1. The Bloodline To understand the DNA of this round, we have to look at the history books. For the first half of the 20th century, the American shooter treated 6mm bullets like they were contagious. It was a ghost town. If you were desperate for a .243 diameter projectile back then, your only real option was the 6mm Lee Navy, and that was chambered in that quirky straight-pull bolt action. By 1935, that cartridge was effectively dead and buried. Now across the Atlantic? Totally different story. The British gunmakers were experimenting with six mils way ahead of the curve. In the 1920s, you had legends like Holland and Holland rolling out exotic rounds. We are talking about the 240 flanged Nitro Express. But here in the States? Radio silence. That is exactly why 1955 was such a pivotal year for domestic ballistics. Seemingly overnight, both Winchester and Remington decided to wake up and drop new 6mm cartridges on the American public. It was an immediate heavyweight title fight. The 243 Winchester versus the 244 Remington. Winchester played it smart. They took the brand new 308 Winchester case, which was the new darling of the military and commercial world, and they simply necked it down. Simple. Efficient. Remington took a different path. They based their design on the classic 7x57 Mauser case, which gave them a slightly longer body and a bit more boiler room for powder capacity. On paper, the Remington actually had the edge on velocity, but ballistic charts don't win wars. Strategy does. Number two, the marketing war. If you were a betting man in the mid-50s looking strictly at the chronograph data, the 244 Remington looked like the winner. It was faster. It had more case capacity. But Winchester had an ace up their sleeve, and it wasn't velocity. It was versatility. Winchester chambered the 243 in their flagship Model 70 bolt gun, but they also put it in the Model 88 lever action, and Savage picked it up for the Model 99. They flooded the zone. Remington, on the other hand, made a catastrophic tactical error. They completely misread the room. They marketed the 244 exclusively as a long-range varmint cartridge. They sold it with light 75 and 90 grain bullets. And here is the nail in the coffin. They rifled the barrels with a slow 1 in 12 inch twist rate. For light speedy varmint grenades that twist is fine. But a 1 in 12 twist absolutely will not stabilize the long heavy bullets you need for ethically taking deer. They crippled their own cartridge right out of the gate. Winchester saw the opening. They pitched the 243 as a dual purpose hybrid. A rig you could use on coyotes on Saturday and whitetail on Sunday. They loaded it with 80 grain pills for speed and 100 grain soft points for meat. Most importantly, Winchester used a faster 1 in 10 twist rate to stabilize those heavier projectiles. The market spoke immediately. The 243 Winchester was a runaway freight train. 
the 244 Remington withered on the vine. By 1963, Remington practically waved the white flag. They rebranded the cartridge as the 6mm Remington. They tightened the twist to 1 in 9 and finally offered a heavy game load, but it was too little too late. The war was over. The 243 Winchester took the crown and it has held on to it with a death grip for 70 years. It is the undisputed king of the 6mm world. Number 3. Ballistics and Application Let's look at the numbers that built this dynasty. Your bread and butter factory loads are usually an 80 grain bullet moving at 3350 feet per second, or a 100 grain bullet cruising at 2960. But modern ammo technology has blown the doors wide open. You can find screamers as light as 55 grains and heavy hitters up to 105 grains. It covers the entire spectrum from prairie dogs to pronghorn. Here is the general rule of engagement. Anything under 90 grains is for varmints. These bullets are designed for rapid explosive fragmentation. Anything 90 grains or heavier is built for controlled expansion and deep penetration on big game. For the varmint hunters out there, those lightweight rounds are devastating. Take the Winchester 55 grain ballistic silver tip. The box says 39 10 feet per second. I have seen guys with 26 inch barrels chronograph that load at over 4,000 feet per second. That is a red mist machine. However, a lot of the serious long-range predator hunters prefer the 80-grain loads. They just buck the wind significantly better than the .22 caliber centerfires. But let's be real. The 243 earned its stripes as a deer cartridge. It is accurate. It is gentle on the shoulder. It is not intimidating. That is why it is the default first rifle for millions of American hunters, myself included. It is the tool you hand to a new shooter to build their confidence without punishing them. But that brings us back to the elephant in the room. Is the 243 Winchester actually the best tool for the job today? Or is it a handicap that we are just too nostalgic to admit? Number 4. The hidden cost for all its virtues and there are plenty. The 243 Winchester has a dark side. It is the stuff you only learn after the check has cleared. On deer-sized game inside typical hunting ranges, say 200 yards. It is lethal. It gets the job done. But the moment you start stretching that distance, or you go up against a heavy-bodied buck, the equation changes rapidly. The 243 sheds energy fast at extended ranges. If you place a perfect double lung shot behind the shoulder, you are fine. But your margin for error evaporates. It becomes razor thin. Compared to a 7mm 08 or a 308, you have far less forgiveness if that shot angle is bad or if the wind pushes you back into the paunch. The second issue is one that mostly the competition guys and high volume shooters talk about. The 243 is a notorious barrel burner. You are forcing a massive volume of superheated gas through a tiny 6mm bore. It is what we call an overbore cartridge. That creates intense heat and pressure that acts like a sandblaster on the throat of your barrel. If you are shooting matches or sitting on a prairie dog town all weekend dumping mags, you are going to see accuracy degrade fast. I have seen barrels lose their edge in as little as 1,500 rounds. That is a shockingly short lifespan for a precision rifle. Now for the guy who shoots a box of ammo a year to check his zero, that barrel will outlast him. But if you are a shooter who actually trains, it is a real logistical and financial limitation you have to factor in. So here is the bottom line. The strength of the 243 Winchester is not that it is perfect. Because it isn't. Its strength comes from the shooter knowing exactly what it can do. And more importantly, what it cannot do. If you keep it within its comfort zone, it is one of the most capable and pleasant cartridges ever designed. But if you try to push it beyond those boundaries, whether that is taking a shot at 500 yards on an elk, or trying to run a high-volume barrel heater, you're going to have a bad time, and the consequences can be heartbreaking, knowing where that line is drawn. That is the difference between a freezer full of venison and a long walk back to the truck with nothing but a story about the one that got away. I hope you guys got some value out of that breakdown. If you did go ahead and crush that like button, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next upload. And drop a comment down below. Tell me your war stories with the 243. Good or bad, I want to hear them. Train hard, stay safe, and we will see you in the next one.